Hi, I'm Michaela Rice Anderson. I've been active in 4-H for 13 years, starting as a clover bud, continuing through 4-H, dabbling in collegiate, and closing the circle, becoming a leader in two states. Without 4-H, I don't know where I'd be. Not only has 4-H given me a multitude of opportunities and life skills, it also gave me the strength to make it through some tough times, like my father's many deployments in the Army Reserves, and the resources to make the transition to college when I was barely 17 possible. Though I started 4-H working with livestock when I was 8 and immediately learning the responsibilities that came with it, my story really kickstarts a few years later. I was 13 years old and invited to testify to the Board of Regents in our state capital why 4-H was a crucial asset to our university and needed better representation with a vice provost. Since then, I've been invited to testify to the board on behalf of 4-H multiple times. That was the 4-H experience that really struck on my passion. On that trip, I attended a hearing in the House Judicial Committee on a bill to ban cell phone use for teens while driving. I testified against it, given the inconsistencies in the literature, the lack of safety exceptions, like if you're being stalked, and the fact that it preyed on youth who in a lot of cases don't have a voice. My testimony was later used and quoted in a committee where this bill was stopped and a more inclusive version was suggested. I didn't stop there. I made it my mission to get youth involved in their government. I taught classes and did presentations to the 4-H and to the school district, and I contacted legislators to schedule them to speak with our youth. I attended our state's 4-H Youth and Governance program every year, continuing to testify on bills related to education, agriculture, safety, and cell phone use. I found that the program didn't offer an opportunity for youth who had attended and wanted to continue learning about their governance. I worked with the 4-H agent, the Youth and Governance Director, and legislators to create a part two where youth could actively shadow their legislators attending floor sessions, meetings, and receptions, as well as work in the office doing constituent work and research, making it a hands-on learning experience. When I was 15, my father was deployed to Iraq for his second tour. My mother was injured in a car accident and it left me taking care of my mother, younger sisters, the farm, and still trying to manage school. I couldn't keep up and suffered severe depression. I fell behind in school. I felt like I had no purpose, no reason to live. 4-H helped me through that. 4-H reminded me that I matter and that I'm worth it. I dedicated my time to 4-H and helping give back to the program. In 2013, our district and our community abruptly lost a young 4-H'er. The 4-H memorial bed was in an unfortunate property dispute between the fair and the 4-H. It was overgrown and grossly neglected. Given the dispute, I had to seek donations of soil, flowers, and bed materials on my own. But within a month, I had collected over $1,500 worth of materials and rallied the help of dozens of 4-H'ers and community members. It still continues to be a community effort and the bed was returned to the 4-H. Today, I continue to be active in 4-H in both Colorado and Alaska. I'm working with leaders in Alaska to plan the 2016 Western Regional Leaders Forum as Teen Track Coordinator and the Social Media Outreach. 4-H has given me so much. It's helped me succeed and become a better person. Without 4-H, I wouldn't be where I am today.